So yeah. uh, continue. What are the parts that you uh, con you your company makes for the yeah. VR? So the next thing we uh, did, you know, still on the motor side of the house, is we did the billet oil pans. As you know, and yeah. many people in the VR30 community know, hit a speed bump wrong, cracked oil pan. Yeah. <laughs> hit a pothole, cracked oil pan. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we did was designed the uh, billet oil pans to actually have it without going too big in size. Mm -hmm. We wanted to maintain, so we're within a quarter inch of the factory size, uh, but we gained one quart of oil. Mm -hmm. We've inc we've you know, modified the baffle system inside, uh, the passive baffle system inside, so that it actually retains oil better in cornering. Uh, and then we also changed the flooring of it so that it actually drains all the, the oil when you do an oil change. So what most people don't understand yeah, is you when you do an oil change on a factory oil pan, it still leaves like half a quart in there. And it's some of the nastiest stuff. I mean, we actually have one, I think, over here somewhere. Um, that I can get up and show people, but yeah, it usually just puddles in the bottom and doesn't drain out. Right, so, uh, so that was that was the other thing that we've done. Well, I like what you sat there and said. Um, some of the people, if you just missed it, what he's saying is, um, you get an upgraded oil plan, you add about a quarter more oil. This is a turbocharged car. We need as much oil as in, in there as possible while the car is running. But he said this other part during cornering, not only cornering but aggressive launches. The, mm -hmm. the, the oil will actually move to the back of the oil pan. I don't remember the placement of the actual uh, siphon, but what yeah. could happen is if there's not enough oil in that oil pan, you'll actually start sucking in air into the oil pump, mm -hmm. and then you lose your fucking motor because oil get, pressure drop. Yeah, you right? get a cavitation. You get a cavitation in the oil pump. Uh, and then at that point, you are losing suction, uh, and then you get starvation of oil to the engine, which then causes catastrophic failure. Exactly. So this is for the guys who like to do aggressive launches from a dig. That's actually cool. So all the parts do you develop? Uh, so next on the list is our solid transmission mounts, which have been hugely popular. As um, mm -hmm. soon as we post them up, they get sold out pretty quick. I didn't even know you uh, had a transmission mounts. I didn't even know. Yeah, so we have, we started out with the all-wheel drive. Um, we also worked with a couple other companies and did private label for their first launches of uh, transmission mounts. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now we, given them time in the marketplace so we can actually release our real-wheel drive um, uh, transmission mount. So that is just now coming out this month. Uh, those are in production right now. Um, people are going to really enjoy that. Uh, that is going to be probably one of the cleanest transmission mounts that comes out on the market uh, and will be extremely strong. So uh, rear wheel drive guys, uh, be prepared to get better shifts and better zero to 60 times. So uh, that'll, that'll be coming here probably by then. What, what, what it, material is that made out of? So we use 6061 T6 uh, mm -hmm. billet aluminum. Um, it's, it's enough to give uh, the strength that we need, but also keep lightweight. So we're probably about 30% of the factory uh, units weight. Okay, uh, but you know we're weight reduction. <laughs> yeah, weight reduction straight up. Uh, the, the factory <laughs> one is insanely heavy, uh, but the amount of deflection it has. Yeah. Uh, so for it. instance, yeah, you've seen the videos where a guy is sitting there is squeezing it, and you can literally turn it like this. That's insane. Just with your hands. So ours, you know, it's going to stay flat. You're going to get better shifts. You're going to be more consistent shifts, and it's going to feel a lot better as you're driving. So. So what he's saying, guys, is there's less twisting in the drive line of the car. That's when you yep. take the aggressive launches. You can actually feel the kickback of the engine fighting, fighting, especially on the stock mounts. So someone should definitely do this on the all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drives, as you said. Um, what would yep. be your recommendation, or are you looking into doing possibly solid motor mounts for the uh, VR32? Uh, we're not looking to do solid motor mounts at this point in time. I think uh, Z1 already has a product out for that. Um, but we are looking to do a new differential mount. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're working on something that is uh, going to be really, really good for the uh, for the for this. Oh, is it like more of a bracket or brace or a mount? I'm so it's going to be a full brace. Okay, so, brace. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. So we're basically going to be. Uh, putting an adapter plate that goes on the entire back of the uh, um, the differential with while also allowing you to be able to drain your oil, be able to drain anything you need there. And then we're also hitting two separate points on the subframe brace mm -hmm. or the subframe uh, so that, you know, you don't get, you know, a lot of people, they'll get the one bar that comes down and actually hit that, hit that bracket. Mm -hmm. You still have 
some flexibility. We want to take that flexibility out. We want to get, get rid of any flexibility in the system. Uh, that's why people go with the solid mounts in the back uh, and they do things like that uh, to, to really uh, uh, kind of stiffen things up. So we want to make sure that we're, we're making everything as stiff as possible uh, to get as much power to the ground. Okay. All right. So what other components are you have developed so, or looking to develop? We have, I'll, I'll go into some of the other stuff. We're going to continue talking on the stuff that we do have out right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, fine. That's fine. That's some fine. Of the, yeah. Some <laughs> of the stuff that we have coming, uh, I, I, we have, we'll, you guys will enjoy. <laughs> um, so outside of that, um, we have our direct port meth injection kits. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's been extremely successful so far. On average, we're seeing across, and I'll send you over some uh, uh, Dynagraph pictures uh, of a stock turbo, uh, just uh, upgraded uh, high pressure fuel pump stock injectors with our meth kit. Uh, the guys are making over 20 uh, wheel horsepower across the entire RPM band and over 25 foot pounds of torque. No changes except for adjusting for fuel. So tell people that are watching why, remember the people that are watching are new to this game. Some of them don't know about it. Why yeah. do you require, why is it required to have a meth kit? Uh, so, you know, typically, you know, there's two applications of a meth kit. So the first application is to cool the charge. The, the second application is to use it as a fuel additive. Uh, in the case that I'm specifically talking about with our direct port, it's more of a fuel additive. Uh, so it allows you to stretch your factory or um, your aftermarket fueling system a little bit further than where, where it would typically be able to go. Um, the added benefit is it does have some uh, cooling factor to it. Uh, it will clean your intake valves. So those guys talking about, oh, I got 30,000 miles. Yeah. I need to pull my heads and, and get yeah. my valves yeah. walnut blasted. Yeah. yeah. No, you won't have to do that because the methanol will actually eat away at the carbon buildup mm. and actually allow it to be combusted and go out the exhaust. So okay. uh, that's a positive effect of kind of like steam cleaning <laughs> your yeah. valve, so to speak. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of advantages to actually running methanol, um, but mainly it, uh, the water uh, portion of it. So usually you do a mixture of a certain amount of ethanol. Uh, or sorry, not ethanol, methanol and a certain amount of water. Mm -hmm. uh, the water acts as a um, cooling uh, function of it and the methanol portion of it acts as a, an exciter mm -hmm. uh, and an actual combustible, combustible fluid, so. Okay, <laughs> that's good. So, so do you think someone who's E85 on stock turbo, should they definitely go and purchase this, this um, methanol kit? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's definitely something that if you're at the point where you're like, hey, I can't get any more out of it, mm. um, out of what I got, and you know, you don't necessarily want to drop two thousand dollars on a on a fuel pump and another, you know, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars on injectors. Mm. Um, jump, you can get this and get another twenty plus wheel horsepower out of it, and you have the cooling effect. Okay, that's cool. Exactly, and the cleaning, so it helps with the maintenance side of things. All right, I like that, I like that. All right, so what other uh, uh, other parts have you developed for the VR30? Uh, that's out. So we, did, we do have uh, a partner with a company that does the transmission builds, but as of right now, that's not our focus. Uh, so mm -hmm. we're kind of putting that on the back burner. If someone does want a transmission build, um, we can put them in contact with our partner that does that. Um, but we do have triple disc torque converters, which is a huge plus. Uh, that helps out with a lot of the, the shock and load as you guys start really bumping up in power. Um, so that'll be really helpful. So as of right now, as of right now for 2020, that's what we've, we've delivered. Uh, and then for 2021, we've already launched a few products, mm -hmm. um, such as our race, uh, triple pass race intercoolers. Uh, so the, those, uh, first units are actually about to go out to customers, uh, to be able to start really playing with. Um, and that comes with an integrated blow off valve already, already into the end tank, mm -hmm. uh, the air tank of that. So it's a really clean build. So we'll have some more pictures and, and tutorials and stuff like that on, on those as they get released uh, in, into the wild here in a few weeks. So what he's talking about, guys, is hopefully I put a picture up. Or, or if you have one close, just in case, if you have a picture on the computer. But he's talking yep. about the water to air intercoolers, the two silver boxes that sit on top of the motor just in case you guys don't know and what he's saying is now it has an integrated blow valve on that system and he also stated another thing that's very important he's probably going to just add more to it it is triple pass 
So the stock unit is one pass. The fluid comes from one end and to the other, and that's it. It heats up and it does its job, and the fluid keeps going, right? But what he's saying yes. is it actually goes one, two, three, which means you actually get, I would assume, 300% more uh, cooling effect because it's a triple pass compared to just a single pass, which brings down the coolant charge of the coolant or the air charge a lot cooler, which means you run more timing, the car is more powerful, and the car is running good. So this is actually pretty much the first of I know of anybody else doing this for the platform. So hopefully I put a picture up or if he wants to show you guys right now, you get to see it, but it actually is a really good looking unit and I definitely like it. Would you yes. recommend someone doing this um, water to air cooler set on stock turbos? Uh, not necessarily on stock turbos, but once you go to upgraded turbos, this would definitely be something that we would, we would recommend for somebody. Yes. Um, you know, let me see if I can get the assembly for this one. Okay, so you re would recommend someone like, say, for instance, they have RT turbos, or they have, I think, Comp made their own version, and or pure turbos, and you're going full F and send, 22, 25 PSI, you got the hottest air charge in the world because you're running that much boost, mm -hmm. you're going to need to get a triple, a triple pass uh, heat uh, water to air uh, intercoolers because right. it's better cooling. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Do appreciate you guys. Love you guys very much. You can also check out the two links I posted for some of my other videos. Also, on top of that, if you want to purchase some Boost in Motion merch, definitely check the link that I posted also. And finally, if you've been watching all my videos and you enjoy them, please hit the link for to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.